as we're striving to create this life for ourselves, the life that we want to live, the life that we're proud of, the life that we are excited about, we need to be, perfectionism doesn't fit in there. It doesn't. So we really need to dive deep into this because these are the things that cause people to quit, to give up early, to give up on their own dreams and their own lives and just bail. Hey, hey, everyone. This week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander. And today we are going to get serious. We're going to dig down deep because I think we have all experienced or go through or are currently involved in this thing called perfectionism. Now, before you just dismiss that really quick thinking, oh, I'm not a per- uh, I'm not a perfectionist. I'm going to just skip this episode. Maybe you haven't identified some of the perfectionist attitudes that you might have. So we're going to go through that and talk about these things. I'm going to make a disclaimer right here up front right now that I am not a therapist. I am not suggesting I'm a therapist. I'm not suggesting any of that whatsoever. As a matter of fact, we are going to talk about some therapy or some um, ways to be able to talk through some of these things. And I think it's really important. And we will get to that at the end of the show. But that's like the former formal disclaimer that we all need to say out up front that I have learned some things from talking to professionals and I want to share some of those things with you and also just things I've learned on my own and what what really the things that are really important because we tend to overthink and overanalyze and do some of the things that I'm going to be talking about today and we're all just going to identify with this one way or the other so that why so that we can become better so that we can become better business owners so that we can become better people in general. And the better we are at managing our own thoughts and emotions and managing ourselves, the better we are at business, the better we are at serving others, the better we are in our relationships. So we're going to talk about these things today. And if you're a perfectionist or you're recovering or you're wanting to get a handle on all the stuff, then this is the episode you want to dial into. There's going to be a lot of things in here, but a lot of really practical stuff that you can do. But also um, the first part of it is really identifying the areas or places or how you might be a perfectionist and you didn't even realize it. So before we get to that, I want to remind you that yes, we have a workshop coming up. We have a workshop very soon coming up in a few weeks. Um, The Confident Wholesale Bundlers Workshop is going to be in person for 2022 in Atlanta, Georgia. I know you've heard me say this before, but there are only a few seats left. Um, More and more people have signed up and we were about 50% sold out a few weeks ago. And now we're just, you know, there's not very many seats left. But here's the thing. These workshops change lives. And I'm not saying that just because it's my workshop. It changes my life every single time I go. Every time I teach this workshop, every time I get together in person with you guys, lives are changed. Do you want your life to change? Do you want it to just stay the same and you're like all cool with it? That's cool. That's fine. But if you're in into wanting to change your financial status, your business status, you are where you work or where you don't work, working for yourself or otherwise, the workshop is going to help you build bundles confidently so that you can build a business that you love, that's paying you enough money, that is going to get you to your goals. So please consider coming to the workshop. I'm going to meet you on the first evening. We're just going to have drinks and food and we're going to get to know one another and we're just going to hang out. On Thursday, I mean, I'm sorry, The next day in the workshop on Friday, we are going to get bundling. We're going to look at catalogs. We're going to have conversations that are really, really important for changing your business. And we're going to build bundles together, period. It's such a fun time. It's a great learning experience. And it's also a way to walk away with some great ideas and new perspectives. Do you guys know that when a room full of people get together and start sharing ideas that like we all get to leave with all those ideas and it can spark new ideas within us? You guys, it's magic. I promise it's magic. And then the final day is walking through the trade show, having the conversations, meeting the reps, getting catalogs, getting ideas, and you can hit the ground running in 2022 with the best business experience you're going to have with Amazon bundling. I'm telling you, these things are so much fun and such a great learning experience. I want to be able to meet you in person. I want to be able to see you. So please, mommyincome.com slash workshop. Don't forget workshop 50 to save a few dollars. And now let's really talk about what we're going to get into 
today. We really want to talk about these things that we are going to be focusing on. Overcoming perfectionism. And you guys, if, if you don't know, you want to join the Facebook group, we, we have a continuing conversation. So you don't just get to hear the podcast and go away and don't want to continue connecting with people. If you want to connect with people, um, mommyincome.com slash join us. Join our Facebook group. It is the Amazon Files powered by Mommy Income. And you need a code word to get in. A code word. Why? Because we don't want a bunch of people spamming. We don't want a bunch of people selling their services. And, you know, we just had to remove someone for selling their services, trying to reach out to people on DMs and like basically get. No, we don't want any of that junk in there. So you need a code word to get in. Your code word is talk. Hashtag talk. That is going to be your code word for this week's episode on mommyincome.com slash join us. You want to join the Facebook first, the workshop, then the Facebook group. Okay. So my fellow perfectionism friends, how are we doing with this? Well, let's talk about it because one of the things that we really need to understand here is identifying these things, identifying where and how you might be recognizing your your perfectionism here. Okay, so... Recognizing and identifying some of your perfectionism might be there. So one of the things that you want to think about is, do you identify with any of these types of thoughts or even things that you've said out loud? So here's a great example. Uh, Black and white type of thinking, like anything less than perfection is a failure. Or if I need help from others, I'm weak. Have you ever thought that? If I make a mistake in front of others, I will not be able to recover from the humiliation. I can't handle somebody being upset with me. Have you ever thought about those things? Those are real good indicators that you struggle with some perfectionism. Or maybe some of these types of thoughts, assumptions and probability overestimation. I know that seems like big words, but like you overassume that people are thinking, feeling, acting, or will respond in a certain way. So um, things like, although I spent weeks researching this bundle, I just know it won't do well. I spent weeks on this. I used the framework, yet I just know it won't do well. Or my boss, my mother-in-law, my spouse will think I'm lazy if I take a couple of sick days. If I take a day off, someone's going to assume I'm lazy. Someone's going to think I'm lazy. How about should statements? Should. I should never make mistakes. I should never come across as nervous or anxious. I should always be able to predict problems when they occur. I should, I should, I should. I should do that. I should volunteer here. I should participate in this. Now, remember, we're just identifying at this point, right? Oh. Any of these behaviors, chronic procrastination, difficulty completing tasks, giving up super easily, overly cautious, like spending three hours on a task that takes 20 minutes, excessive checking, double checking, and triple checking mistakes, spending 30 minutes looking over an email to make sure that there's no mistakes, that you didn't you use proper grammar, that you didn't, you know, do punctuation correctly. Constantly trying to improve things by redoing them and redoing them and redoing them. Making elaborate to-do lists, like when to get up and brush teeth and shower, avoiding trying new things because you're afraid you're going to make mistakes. Can you identify with any of these behaviors? I mean, I know I can. I know that, you know, some people struggle with the redoing things over and over and over again. It's just not quite right. It's just not this. It's just not that. Or... Someone's going to be upset at me if I say no or, you know, any of these things. But if you can identify with any of these thoughts or behaviors, you are not alone. We all struggle in some way with being overly perfectionism, perfectionistic. <laughs> Is that even a word? <laughs> Is being overly perfectionistic about certain things in life. Maybe it doesn't spill into all of the areas of your life, but a lot of them or maybe all of them or maybe just in your business. The good news is that there are a lot of practical ways that you can push past these and continue on the journey towards your in a perfect world. So 
So IAPW is what we use around here. Uh, you're in a perfect world. Like I always catch phrase that by, I understand there's no such thing as a perfect world, but that's what we're striving for, right? If we could dream up our in a perfect world. Now, all of this is detailed in my book, Dream Big, Step Small. You can buy it on Amazon. You can buy it on mommyincome.com. You can get it on Audible. You can listen to it either way or even on Kindle. But Dream Big, Step Small goes through the entire process of your in a perfect world. So as we're striving to create this life for ourselves, the life that we want to live, the life that we're proud of, the life that we are excited about, we need to be, perfectionism doesn't fit in there. It doesn't. So we really need to dive deep into this because these are the things that cause people to quit, to give up early, to give up on their own dreams and their own lives and just bail. Because they don't know how to deal with these underlying issues that they have. Quote to you by a therapist. And I want you to just let it resonate. Because these are medically proven facts here. That perfectionists actually achieve less than those with healthier attitudes because their focus on perfectionism robs them of motivation and can bring on procrastination and other self-defeating behaviors. That's Dr. Elizabeth Scott, okay? Perfectionists actually achieve less. Now, don't confuse perfectionism with high achievers. So high achievers are always looking for goals and they always want to achieve and they're really high achievers. But perfectionism is constantly in a state of fear and worry and people pleasing all mixed into one. It's like a terrible combination. So there are definitely some helps here. And you guys know I'm tough love, but I'm also practical. And I want to give you some practical things that can really help you move through even just the smallest amounts of perfectionism. And I'm going to get tough with you. And I'm going to say some hard things. Why? Because I care. Because I love you, because I care, because I want you to do your best, be your best, but not be perfect because none of us are. We never will be. And even if you were, you still wouldn't be satisfied with it anyway. So what difference does it make? <laughs> okay, seriously, on a serious note, though, what, um, I've got five things that we can do uh, on a daily basis or focus on even just one of them to help us overcome this perfectionism because we've already heard it. We've already heard verified medical, uh, psychiatric things that say perfectionism and perfectionists achieve less. You don't want to achieve less, do you? You don't realize that you're actually hindering yourself and self-sabotaging yourself by continually trying to put things out there that are perfect. So here's one of the first things that you can do to kind of overcome this type of perfectionism in your business, in your life, and everything is set realistic expectations. In the world of perfectionism, we set extremely high standards for ourselves, and then we totally beat ourselves up about it when we can't meet those expectations. This can trigger procrastination, which leads to more beating up of yourself and eventually quitting, saying things like, I'm not good at this. I'm never going to get it right. I'm always going to, it's always going to be hard. I'm going to make these mistakes. Procrastination is a sign of fear. And why are we afraid? We're afraid of the impossible standards that we set for ourselves. So stop it. If you think this stuff, like, I'm going to put this off until I have more information. I can't get it done in a short amount of time, so why even start? It's going to take forever, so why should I bother? I won't be good at it. So these are signs of perfectionism and fear. Fear that we can't, that we won't, that we're not going to be good enough, so we just don't even try. But instead, we can set realistic expectations and goals. Set goals that are measured, that have measured results, but measured by the time, effort, and energy you are going to put in. So say your sales were $100,000 this year, and you decide, I'm going to double my sales for next year. Well, that's a great goal. But is it realistic? And the way we measure that is to see how much time and effort and energy we're actually putting in when we set a goal. Is it realistic with your uh, with your schedule, with what you have going on, with friends, with family, with life, with hobbies, with your nine to five if you've got one? Set realistic expectations. So like an example of some of this is like, 
you know, people, of course, it's like January, right? Everyone's going to get in shape or lose weight or get healthier, right? And they're like, okay, if you exercise zero days right now, setting a goal for exercising five days a week is unrealistic. You're going to go from zero to five. How about from zero to one? Zero to two. Realistically, looking at your schedule and saying, how much time can I put in? Because you need to let yourself off the hook for something big and grand. Would you rather quit something big or grand or build small, sustainable habits over time? If you walk for 15 minutes twice a week and you're consistent at that, you will have the results. You will have better health. You will be breathing better. You'll have better circulation 15 minutes a day, 15 minutes twice a week. Now, if you work out five days a week from zero, three times, you're not going to get the results any faster than that. You're actually going to give up sooner because you're going to be sore. You're like, I'm going to work out today, then the next day. And then you're so sore, you can't even work out. And then you quit because you think that you're going to repeat the cycle over and over again. Realistic expectations, realistic goals. You cannot expect 100% growth if you only put 25% effort in. That's on you. And you can't expect to succeed when you're going from zero to 100. Small steps are everything, which leads me to number two. Focusing on small accomplishments. If you're a perfectionist and you're constantly um, brushing this up and fixing this and tweaking this and changing this, Instead, focus on the small accomplishments to fuel your fire. Most perfectionists are like fueled by results and they're fueled by a successful result. Well, if that is the gas that you put in your tank to keep moving, wouldn't you want more, more often? Would you like to put gas in your tank every single day to push you a little bit more forward? Perfectionists tend to set goals of unreasonable excellence, which I'm all about excellence. I'm all about doing your very best every single time. However, there's always a learning curve. And as perfectionists, we don't like to let ourselves off the hook. We somehow expect that we are going to start something that we've never done before and just be awesome at it. Well, guess what? You're not. And that's okay because no one is. No one is. You're measuring yourself against something that doesn't exist. Let yourself off the hook a little bit here. You'll tend to be more forgiving of your mistakes when you expect them. You're going to step really, really small. and You're not changing your goals. You're just reducing your stress by changing the milestones, changing the, the big, huge goals of, oh, sure, you want to double your sales next year? Absolutely. First of all, realistic expectations. Do you have the capacity to do that? Do you have the capacity to double your efforts or at least 50% your efforts from last year? You don't have to sacrifice your end result, your goal, the, the what you want. You just have to do it smaller, a lot smaller. So like, again, getting into shape, if you want to get into shape and you just want to be healthier overall and you say, I would maybe like to lose 50 pounds in 2022, we don't have to lose 50 pounds in three months. Would you be happy at the end of 2022 if your goal was to lose 50 pounds if you lost 50 pounds in that year? Sure, you'd be happier if you did it in six months as long as you can keep it that way. But statistics have shown over and over again that the longer it takes you to learn something and implement it and build those habits, the more sustainable it is. So if you make a million dollars in six months, your ability to continually achieve that or continually keep up on that or take good care of it is slim to none. But if you make a million dollars over five years, you have built up the habits of knowing how to create and sustain that income. Longer is better. And yet the society is constantly telling us faster, quicker, bigger, better, all those types of things. When actually history and statistics show that the slower you take your pro progress, the more sustainable it is. I don't know about you, but I'm here for that. 
for that. Find your success in the process. Enjoy as much of the process and the journey as possible. Because when you arrive at the top of a mountain, and you will, if you put the results in and put the work in and dedicate yourself to that, you know what you're going to see on the top of that mountain? The next one. Do you know what's in between? A valley that you're going to have to walk through to get to the next mountain. It doesn't end. Self-improvement, business growth, these things don't end. They just get better. Stop always seeking the same result and instead step really, really small and look for small incremental improvements. Those are things to celebrate. All right, buckle in because this is going to be my biggest and my most favorite one here. And I'm going to get on a soapbox for a little bit about it. And I'm going to hug you at the same time, hug you and slug you, I guess. <laughs> I guess I can like make that up right now. But like, the, here's the thing. One of the things about perfectionism that constantly gets in our way is assumptions. To overcome perfectionism, you have to st- Start working on assumptions versus fact. So some of you are probably thinking, oh, those small steps are just not good enough. I must perform at an XYZ level way up here. My question to you is, or what? What happens if you don't? Or you're thinking small steps aren't good enough. It's not good enough. Got not good enough for who? Yourself? Fair enough. Most of the time, we are thinking and assuming that it's not good enough for the world or for our spouse or for our boss or for someone else or someone else we're trying to measure up to. So if you're if you really dive deep and you ask yourself, sit with that question for a minute, not good enough for who? Answer that question. For your mother-in-law? For yourself? For your spouse, for your boss, why or who is it not good enough for? What is the desired outcome? I mean, is it praise and accolades? You want to do your best so that you win some sort of award and you get a pat on the back for that? Is it somebody's approval? Is it someone's permission? Is it living up to your own standard? Because why not? Because did you know that you're good enough being who you are? And the sum of the measure of your tasks do not make you who you are. Because you're breathing. Because of who you are. And your tasks are not who you are. That is what you do. But if you are in a hospital bed, unable to do anything except just be yourself, you are still enough. And you always will. So ask yourself, enough for who? Stopping, assuming, not good enough for who? So like, here's an example. If I don't do this, X, Y, Z, whatever it is, my mother-in-law will think I'm a bad mom and she'll say so. Or, But what happens if she does? Do you feel bad about yourself and then you try to please her by doing better or more? At what cost? Are you actually going to change who you are to fit into somebody else's assumptions? Now, let me just put this out there about assumptions. Do you know for a fact or are you assuming? Assuming what people think? Assuming how, if they're talking about you? Assuming that they're judging you? Rejecting you? Nine out of ten times you assume people are thinking about you and judging you, but they're not care more about themselves than you. Let me just be just be frank and upfront about that. This is like the hug and the slug, right? People care about themselves. Running around thinking about your shoes or your weight or how you're doing in business or not. Nine out of 10 times, they're about their own business, their own life, their own stuff.
like you're constantly thinking. I I, I heard that one time um, in, I don't, I can't remember if it was church or someone else where someone was like, are you so egotistical that you constantly are thinking that everyone's thinking about you and judging you and looking at your hair and your stuff and your life? They're not. We're like pre Instantly worry about our own selves. Passing, walking through a store, be like, oh, she clearly doesn't have a mirror at home, does she? You know, have we all thought that? Yeah, sure. But at the end of the day, what what does it matter if somebody thought about that? Does it change you? Does it change who you are? If that random stranger over there thought a bad thought about your outfit or your hair or your business? Are you really going to change yourself because someone else didn't like what you put out there? You change and adjust your goals and your priorities because somebody reject your ideas? If somebody has a negative thought or a negative judgment about you, it's none of your business. That's a reflection on them. Instead of thinking this isn't good enough, good enough for who? And analyze yourself. Good enough. If it's not good enough for yourself, ask yourself why. Dig deep and say, why isn't this good enough for me? Ask yourself, am I doing my best? If the answer is yes, then it's done. If you've done your best, then you're just fearing what other people are going to think of you. And that will own you for the rest of your life if you don't change it. Of, this isn't good enough, or I'm not good enough, or I'm not qualified, or all of these perfectionistic things that we put into our lives. Instead, say, I have put five hours into this, and I gave it my best. It's time to move on. Just try that. Try some mantras. Say, I have done my best. I put out quality work. Can kill so many good things. Ask yourself that in the moment. Are you assuming people are going to think a certain thing? Or do you know that for a fact? And if you do know that for a fact, change yourself or your goals or your priorities or you're in a perfect world because someone else doesn't like it? That's what's at stake here. Four, learning to handle feedback and criticism if it comes your way. Learn to handle feedback and criticism. Now, this is number four. Feedback and criticism, things that, like the word feedback sounds a lot nicer, right? Criticism meaning somebody saying something negative about you or what you put out or your work or your bundle listing or any of these type things, right? First of all, it's not a race. So you're not in a hurry to produce the highest quality, best thing that you can put out there. It's not a race. Life is not a competition. To be honest, nobody's comparing you to somebody else. You're doing that in your own head, but there's not anybody else who like, look at this versus look at this, versus look at this. Remember, most people are very self-absorbed. So who is measuring this? Who are you trying to impress with your perfectionistic work? Always keep focusing on what is your goal and why is that your goal? If you can articulate that to yourself or even someone else, it's such a powerful thing. My goal is to X, Y, Z for this reason. Now, first of all, hear this. You don't owe anybody an explanation for your goals. You don't need anyone's permission. You don't need their approval. You can have whatever goals you want for whatever reasons you want them. And you don't need anybody's permission or approval in order to do that. But occasionally we are going to face feedback and criticism, which is the number one reason why we're perfectionists to begin with, because we crave the approval of others. 
We loathe rejection. We loathe abandonment. We loathe somebody giving us crit criticism or feedback. We hate our own mistakes. We want to make everybody happy. We want to make ourselves happy. And we think if we do something perfect without mistakes, that we're going to achieve that. We can achieve that without perfectionism. We can actually even achieve that with mistakes because mistakes make us better. We can't learn if we're always putting out perfection, which remember, nobody actually does that. Nobody. I don't care how cool somebody's Instagram looks. I don't care what their Pinterest board looks like. I don't care if there's not a speck of dust to be found in their house. Everyone makes mistakes. No one is perfect. How much time are we really going to spend on doing something to make somebody perfect, make something perfect to what? Impress somebody else? Let me tell you this. Their opinion doesn't write you a check. You cannot take their opinion regardless of who it is, and we'll get to that in a second, but you cannot take somebody else's criticism or feedback or opinion or I'm just saying, have you ever heard that from a lovely friend? I'm just saying, yeah, they're and wait, but it doesn't write you a check at the end of the day. It doesn't sleep in your bed. It doesn't walk in your shoes. First of all, we need to learn to accept feedback and criticism from people, but with these parameters. We do not accept or acknowledge feedback or criticism from someone who is not in the game, period. If they're not playing the game, they don't get a response. Their feedback or criticism has no weight. So if you're talking specifically about your business and the person giving you feedback or criticism isn't in your business or in business at all in your industry, they're not in the game, especially if they don't own a business at all. And even if they do, we'll talk about that in a second. So I always use mother-in-law. I don't know why my mother-in-law has passed, God rest her soul. Um, and she wasn't terrible. She just you know what I mean? It wasn't like that, but it, I hear a lot of mother-in-law stories, so I always use that. So forgive me. I hope I'm a mother-in-law one day, and I hopefully, hopefully I'm a kind and good one. <laughs> but I just use that because a lot of people have like the in-law syndrome or like the, the mother-in-law or father-in-law or somebody, maybe it's your boss, whatever. But whoever, if they're not in the game that you're in, they don't get to. Have you ever had parenting advice from someone who has no kids? Like, literally, their opinion does not carry weight because they have no idea what it's like to be a parent, okay? So that's number one. Do not accept or acknowledge feedback or criticism for somebody who is not in the game. Their opinion does not write you a check. It doesn't pay your bills, so it's not relevant. Second, consider the source. Always consider the source. Is it somebody knowledgeable in the area by which they're criticizing? AKA the person with no kids criticizing being a mom. You don't know, so you can't say. Consider the source. If it's somebody you really love and honor and trust, then yes, their opinion, their feedback, their criticism even can carry some weight. But again, going back to that, are you going to change your whole life, your whole persona, your whole entire being or your goals or your business because one person had one opinion? One person told Steve Jobs that the iPhone was a ridiculous idea. Do you think he was going to be like, oh, you're right. I guess I better start over. I guess I better do something else because this one person said the iPhone was dumb. I'm sure there's people out there that said, who's going to want to carry these mini computers in their pockets? That's crazy. No one's going to pay for that. No one's going to pay $1,000 for an iPhone 13. <laughs> As one person that probably was relevant or not relevant decided to criticize that. Think of how ridiculous that can be. Because we all suffer from this, right? I have taken down a social media post because one person out of millions who might be seeing it said one bad thing about it. Podcast because of a bad review I got, which that happens. I'm not for everyone. 
<laughs> That's totally fine with me. But it didn't used to be. So thinking about that, consider the source. Who's saying what they're saying? Why are they saying it? Are they motivated out of jealousy? Are they genuinely trying to help you? Do they have real feedback that could make a difference? Are they in the game? Thirdly, if someone is in the game and a good source, then learn from it. You can't change something that you don't try. So say you put a bundle listing out there and then you contacted me and said, please look at my bundle. And I came back to you with appropriate feedback and maybe like to paraphrase, it's terrible. So you could beat yourself up about it. You could quit. You could be like, okay, this is just not for me. I'm not a good bundler. Or you can accept feedback from a professional who knows exactly what to do and how to change and tweak your ideas and try again and get better and try again after that and get better. Or you could just give up and change your whole business and change your whole goals because that one time, that one thing didn't work out. So if someone's in the game and they're giving you appropriate feedback, even criticism, learn from it, change, grow. And still while we're talking about criticism and feedback, did you die? or they criticize you or they reject you or they abandon you or they roll their eyes or they just kind of make a snarky comment or you even hear somebody walk by you in a grocery store going, hmm, assume? And secondly, if you did assume, did you die? What actually happens if somebody criticizes you? You, you get a bruised ego? Yeah, self-esteem a little bit if you already struggle with insecurity. That's tough. Absolutely, it's tough, but you can also overcome it. Also overcome it by asking yourself those questions. Is this person in the game? Do they even know me or what my life is like? So y'all, if you see me at Target with my hair in a crazy ponytail and probably left my house with my slippers and probably not have pajama pants on, but look like something the cat dragged in, don't judge me. Just give me a hug because at that point I probably need it. <laughs> Is that we're so much harder on ourselves than we assume other people are. It's really because we want to be at our best. And frankly, sometimes we're not always. And that's okay because guess what? We didn't die. We will not die from rejection. We will not die if somebody leaves a negative comment on our Facebook page. We'll actually not even die if someone leaves a bad product review on our bundle. Hello, this has happened to me. You cannot get them removed. You just have to deal with it. But you know what? You learn from it. You take it under advisement and you file it into relevant or irrelevant. Change and accept or disqualify because that person's not in the game or they don't know or they're just being spiteful or whatever it is. Yes, those things hurt just a bruise. It's not a tattoo. You don't have to wear it for the rest of your life. Bruises heal. Criticism kills nothing but our ego and our self-esteem. And remembering that somebody's criticism does not put money in your bank is really helpful. It doesn't add to your life. Thank you for sharing that. That's all you have to say. Thank you for sharing. Stop living to impress all the people and people that actually really don't care. Don't care to a point where they're going to call you up or go to your mother's funeral. Why are you trying to impress them? What difference is that going to make in your life? Don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying don't do your best and just be half-assed and sloppy. No, you want to be excellent. Excellence is not perfection. You don't have to be perfect to be excellent. You just have to do your best. So that leads me to number five, is really to overcome perfectionism. And guys, I mean this in overcoming, like, this is like 
we need therapy for stuff like this, right? Like I'm not your therapist. I'm not certified to be a therapist. So I'm not even ex- assuming that that's what I'm doing here, but I'm just sharing some things that have helped me overcome some of these things. I am a lifelong people pleaser. The first time that someone ever asked me for a refund for services that I provided, I cried for three days. That's how much of a people pleasing perfectionist I was. But then realized that over time, that doesn't define who I am. That's usually on that person, not even on you. Over time, being enough, providing enough, working enough, doing enough, is that there's no such thing as enough. And you will run yourself into the ground for the rest of your life if you don't start working on some of these things right now. Take it from me. I spent too long trying to over protect and over perfect everything so that everyone would be happy with me. And you realize that that's never going to happen. <laughs> I'm not for everyone. And I'm so okay with that now. So this fifth and final thing is really about process. So while you're doing something, don't always just seek the result. And it's either, it's never a pass or fail. Enjoy not just the results, but the steps that you're taking in between the results, the steps that you're taking to get there. We want to strive for progress, not perfection. Now, after 40 and looking back at my life and realizing all the different things, I just took a really big assessment last year. In a couple more episodes, I'm hoping you guys will walk through this type of assessment with me because I think it's so necessary every year to look back, to reflect, to see what you want in the future, but also see how far you've come. Progress, not perfection. Are you moving? Working? Are you planning? Do you have realistic goals that you are moving towards? Are you doing the work? Because perfectionism is going to get in your way because it's a sign of procrastination and fear. Fear that you might not measure up to who? To what? Where's the measuring stick? Who's telling you where the stick should be measured and how you should measure your results? Who's holding this imaginary tape measure that you're trying to measure up to? Just thinking about that, thinking about overcoming these things, not assuming, focusing on the process. Bring to handle feedback and criticism with those questions. Thinking about all of these different things, like stop making assumptions. If you don't know what somebody's thinking, ask them, but be prepared to handle the answer if you don't like it. Or don't ask them and not care. Decide whose opinion matters and who doesn't and how are you going to filter that? Because not everybody gets a say-so. As a matter of fact, very few people should have a say-so in how you run your business, how you run your life, how you parent, how you interact with your spouse. Really small steps and realistic expectations. This stuff doesn't happen overnight. This stuff happens with a lot of positive self-talk and things like that, things that we learn over time. In my 40 years, I realized that I spent so much time trying to impress people that didn't matter. Social media has forced it in our face that we assume that everybody cares. We assume that everybody's listening, everybody's watching, everybody's making all these moves and they can't wait for you to screw up so they can laugh at you. Or they can't wait for you to screw up publicly so that, you know, it's a whole thing. You know, 20 years ago, that was never a thing. You weren't striving to impress somebody who lives in Arizona 3,000 miles away from you because they like to comment on all your Facebook stuff. Still just as less relevant now as it is then. It's just more in your face. So... 
really consider who you're accepting criticism from, who is forcing you or feeding your natural perfectionist tendencies and free a little bit from that by practicing some of these things. Now, if this is something you truly, really, you know, this can be a major mental health issue as well. And I am not a mental health professional, but there are many out there and I highly recommend online therapy um, for those who who want to talk to someone. You know, it's really a relief to talk to somebody. Like we all have this like negative thing or some people do around therapy. Of like, oh my gosh, she needs therapy, right? Heck yes, I do. Thank you very much. <laughs> I wouldn't be the person that I am right now without it. Why? Because we all need a safe place to just 100% be ourselves without worrying that someone's going to judge or criticize and reject. And we realize more and more that they don't really. So mommyincome.com slash therapy. If you really want a good recommendation for online therapy, somebody to talk to, whether it's weekly, monthly, whatever, about your business, about how people don't understand you, about your crazy kids or your crazy ex-mother-in-law or whatever, having a safe place is really important to be able to do that. So mommyincome.com slash therapy, some good recommendations there. Uh, They accept insurance. They accept cash payments. You can do it from the comfort of your own home. As a matter of fact, I do it on my phone in my car because number one, I feel like everyone can hear through my walls here. So I I mean, when I, my therapy is super private and I say all the things, but because of that, I go in my car and I use Zoom and it's like the most amazing thing. I'm so, if the one thing that came out of the pandemic was telehealth, then hallelujah, that was a great thing. So mommyincome.com slash therapy to have some recommendations there for, you know, trying it for yourself because I'm not a therapist. This is just a little snapshot of things I've learned over time and how to deal with some of these perfectionisms and these people pleasing and, you know, all this kind of stuff. But Most of you are here for business advice and how to Amazon, all that kind of stuff. But this is part of it. How many of you have written a listing and haven't published it yet because you just feel like it's not good enough or it's not going to perform? Or you have a lot of bundle ideas and you've never pulled the trigger because it's just not good enough yet. Or I just don't have a handle on the numbers or I just need more information. Send it, ship it, list it you're not going to die. As a matter of fact, you're going to get more reward for doing that because you're going to learn something. And even if it's a total flop, it might be. I've had those. Made me better. Your your mistakes, they make you better as long as you're willing to acknowledge them and move forward to them. So hang in there, my perfectionist friends. There is hope. There is help. And keeping some of these things in mind. Listen to this 10 times if you have to. Practice the mantras. Practice the fact that other people's opinions do not write checks for you. They don't pay your mortgage. They don't get a say so. Right? You're not going to die. You can handle it. And you can learn. Growth is at the other side of your comfort level. Let's do it and do it together. I know you guys could be anywhere else listening to any other program, any other podcast, any other person. I don't take that for granted. Thank you for the time you spent listening. I hope that it was helpful to you. I hope you got one golden nugget from it. If you did, please leave a review. Reviews really help other people see the show, recognize it, and start listening in. Also, share it with somebody. Let them know, hey, this is a great podcast. I'd love to listen to it. Thank you guys so much for listening to the Amazon Files. We'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.